sushi right amount cool now add to create create uh any any other person able to complete it yes yes yeah please share great great Shall I say my screen? Yes, please go ahead. So, Ms. Aini is on call. Hello, yes. I am in call. Hey, have you got a chance to complete this exercise? I mean, you are able to show the data into the grid format? Uh, grid format it is shown. NG forward exercise I have not done, but grid format it is showing in my uh, laptop. Yes. Okay, okay. So you just ready your screen and you are going. Uh, you are, you are next to share your screen and show to everyone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are using the ng serve minus minus port to post it on the port for the. Uh, uh, okay. Because your port is occupied. Okay. Yes, yes, my port is occupied. That's why I run in the on your port. Actually. Great. I did not use any CSS parts. I just uh, like uh, that's fine. I mean, I believe you you are expertise on the CSS. So you can do it anytime. So this is the customer code and then customer name. You click on the add button, then data will be get in the table. Right. So could you please go on to the ng form? Ng oh, sorry, ng four. Okay. Uh, this is my MG4. Right. So, what's happening here? Could you please explain to everyone? So, uh, behind the scenes, like when we click on the add button, so all the data will be pushed into the array. That mm -hmm. is the customer's array. Mm -hmm. And in our view path, like we repeat the uh, customer array and like it uh i mean it did uh, it did the things and uh, like a store one by one in the customer object and uh, display the things uh, like when we repeat uh, when we use the ng4 then it will be iterate the array and uh, by indexing the customer like customer uh, zero customer one and the customer two the data will be stored into a customer uh, object and one by one, like we display the property of the customer object. Perfect, perfect, very good. So I'll I'll just try to summarize what he mentioned. So what he mentioned is ng4 is a structural directive. Ng4 is a structural directive. We are applying the ng4 on the TR. Okay, table row. So and what we say is that in within the ng4, what we have said, let customer of customers. So customers is a collection for from which it fades each element okay so it first goes from the first to last element and it fetches the first element and within the td we have used interpolation so what it does it takes a customer and print it puts its value customer code name and amount this is happened i mean this tr is repeated or tr is printed uh, uh, 
till we are coming we we are completing our loop or we are completing till the last element of the customers okay so this tr is is physically being repeated and that's why on the screen you can able to uh, on uh, dom element if you go to the dom go to your html okay. right just inspect add another one and inspect right so this is the td and which you can see uh, uh, this is the td which holding this value and there is a tr now if we add another element i press on the add you can see there is two tr so this for each is what what is what it does it goes from the first to the last element and it creates the tr it creates a tr it repeat the tr unless and until it reach to, reaches to the last element so that's how this a structural directive works that is how the structural directive which is add the element within the dom and uh, uh, that's why they are calling as a structural directive because this modify or change the structure of the dom and that's what we learn here yeah, our yeah, our first day okay anyway so uh, so so what do you want like to go no i'm stopping my right please <clears throat> So you are not done the exercise. Yes, okay. It's fine. I mean, just a it is just work. Just work. Uh, so it's fine. You can fix it later. But I request you next time when you are coming for a lecture, please, please complete the. Uh, I mean, please try to revise what you learn. Yes, I will just uh, do it right now. Yes. You can stop sharing. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So let's recap what we learned yesterday. So we'll go from the basics. We'll recap it and then we are moving. Today we are going to learn the routing and lazy loading with the routing. So before going on to the lazy loading and other concepts of routing, Let's focus on what we learned today on our first day. So everyone knows that how many modules, like if I say that NPM start, okay, it's internally trigger NG serves. Okay. So how many modules it creates? How many, when, when I do the NG build, how many, not how many modules, how many JS file it creates? We learned yesterday, right? Anybody want to explain that? One is runtime dot JS, I guess. One is our application JS. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm showing it on the screen. Go ahead. Yeah. First runtime dot JS, then polyfill, and then main dot JS. These three JS. Okay. Uh, what is vendor dot JS? Vendor dot JS. If we have used some third party code or. Are you sure? This is actually project code you coded. Okay. So vendor.js has actual your project code or actual everything that you are coded. The main.js is the first module. The first module that you mentioned, it goes into the main.js. And that is what how the folder structure is created. So your main.js, so logically, your main.js will be the lighter one compared to your vendor.js because you will be having a lot of code within your vendor.js. And OK. And uh, and that's what we use. Now let's let's try to understand. I mean, everyone is clear here, right? Everyone is clear, or should I run this application and show you the physically? Let's run it. View so, terminal. Okay, so I'm having something running on my local. So let me use that on. Okay. Does have a vendor that does its question attached? You can see. Okay. This is vendor.js. Let's see what's within the vendor.js. Okay, it's actually your code. It's everything your code that you are coded. It includes CSS as well here. 
Amen. Mm, that's a great question. Does it include the CSS? Mm, it should. Okay. It should, but right, it should. Style.js is another thing, I guess I have seen there. Where? Which one? Uh, you have shown on that how many files we will generate on that. Right, time. right, right. There is also a style.js. Yeah. So I'll get back to you on this. Uh because we 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 have a we have a global CSS and we have a local CSS. According to me, the CSS should be have should be a separate module. However, when we are having a local CSS, I'm not sure if it's a part of the vendor.js because we the import goes into the vendor.js. So do do the webpack build it within the vendor.js or it creates a new CSS file. I'm not sure about it. But I'll get back to you on this. Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking this question. Okay. So uh, uh, let's let's forget about this CSS as of now. We focus on the main.ts, uh, main.js. What the main.js contain is your loading module, loading module, and everything that is uh, included uh, within your loading module. So R is main module is our loading module, and that is contained within a uh, within uh, main dot module, uh, main.js. Okay. Then there is a vendor.js which contains your actual code. There is a runtime.js which requires uh, which requires the runtime dependency or for a webpack to load everything. Whatever the webpack needed goes into the runtime.js. Okay. Then there is a polyfill.js which has the back, uh, backward compatibility code, which makes your code compatible with all the browsers. And that is what the structure is. Now let's look at the, any professional website. So this is how the professional website looks. Okay. So the concept, so according to you, what is routing here? Uh, routing is uh, used to load different things component. I mean, to actually routing means to uh, load different pages. Routing means yeah. navigation basically. Navigation, yeah. yes. Navigating exactly. through different pages. Thank God. So routing is nothing but a navigation. So if you if I'm somewhere here, right, or somewhere there, and if I click something, where here, it's taking me back, right? So what routing tells you? where you wanted to go if you wanted to go on to the new page and it also tells you how to come back okay how to come back on my home page every smart website should have a routing setup that it takes a user from a one page to another page or one information to another information and also help him come back from where he has started so these are the features offered by the routing okay so now we are on the same page what is the routing now we also looked at that very just give me a minute just give me a minute
I'm sorry for the pause. So let's continue. So we we were looking at what is the routing. So let me share my screen again. So routing is take uh, routing help us to go from a one page to another page, and it also help us to come back when we need it, right? Or uh, to the home page, or it, right? So it means that when I come on the website, the home page is getting loaded. Okay. Then there are certain links that says that hey, what is the home page? It is nothing but an introduction page. When you come on a website, it gives you his introduction. Like the website can say that hey, I I am X Y Z. I do these things, that thing, what not, and what not. Like this, uh, learning mate has this home page where the, I mean, when you come onto the domain, the page is being displayed. It's known as the home page. So where in that home page, you see the lot of thing. Uh, so, what whatever I mean, it 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 gives you overview of that website, but it doesn't contain every every information. Now, if you wanted to read a particular information, there are few things like K twelve, other solutions, who we are, what solution about us. So these are the separate links or separate, uh, separate information which is apart from the home page. So every standard website has a home page which has a header and the footer and its body. In the body, they can say that hey. Different, different thing. Now, when I'm saying that header and the footer and the body, what is that mean? So basically, whenever let me go to the past. Whenever you are creating a website, usually it it has a structure like this. So this is your website, and usually it has a structure like this. So there is something called as a header, which has a heading about that company or whatever the website information is. Then there is a footer. Which has a footer information about, I mean, which has a footer thing like different footer footer contained like this uh, about us, contact us, who we are, what we do, email IDs of different peoples, our contact us, sort of that. These things usually contain in the footer. The header is some catchy header or having some sort of images here, right? And here is the body. This body is nothing but a blank page. This body, in the case of the single page application, this body is nothing but a blank page. From here, it decided that uh, whatever things I wanted to load. So here, what I things I wanted to load, the first things come the home. First thing comes home. So home has the information about the entire website. I mean, what it what its home page should be. So it's a main information. What that why we build that website. So for that, like like if I, if I'm company name ABC, so it tells me, hey, my company is ABC, and my company can able to do whatever, what not. We can go on moon, we can go on star. So it is all the information is mentioned here. Then there is another pages like says that which what I I actually do. Like you can buy the stuff from me. So I sells the let it be mugs I sell. So you can buy the mugs from me and what not and what not. So that will be a separate information. So there will be on a home there is a link called as buy here. Or sort of that. So these link goes here, right? So that's how the professional websites look like. And then there is another links like uh, like a hey, uh, meet us or schedule a meeting with us. Sort of that. There is another link. So these these how the website professional website looks. So they have some kind of a menu bar from which you can go to the different menu. And from that menu, there is certain page. There is home page or lined up page which is being the constant page that they display. Okay, so these these all things these all things taken care by something called as a routing. These all things taken care by something called as a routing. Oh, and what is the Angular? Angular is a single page application. So how routing is possible within the Angular? That's my question. Anyone want to take this question? So uh, through lazy loading, no, no. Uh, uh, through using routing model module. By using router no, model. I'm I'm saying that let's let's build a single page application. So what is a single page application? Single page application has a single page. Mm -hmm. So far you are with me. So everyone yes. is with me. Single application has a single page. So what is our single page? Is index dot html is our single page. Okay, every content is loaded within the index dot html. So yes. if we have a single page, how the routing is possible here? So uh, uh, by creating a uh, by clicking by clicking that uh, top navigation the uh, separate component will will load in this uh, single page there is a placeholder called router yes. outlet, router where, outlet. Where we have okay. okay we are running too fast so let's let's see how the single page is possible so like we are loading the content within a particular div we are loading a content within a particular div will will change this content con content constantly with a new content 
So like, like if we are loading an ABC component within the div and we wanted to move to the another information that exists in the XYZ component, then we'll remove the ABC component and we'll load the XYZ component within the same div. div. Yes. And that's how this routing is possible. So that's how the single page routing is possible. So we are not actually navigating to from 1.html to 2.html, from index.html to new index.html. We are not doing that. We will be on the index.html. However, within a single div, we will be changing our content constantly. Or our DOM will get, get updated constantly. OK, so the HTML mm -hmm. content that is previously present, we remove that. We add a new content. So how this is possible, the, the content, what is Angular? Angular is a binding framework. So it binds the HTML with a with your component. What is a component? This code code behind for the HTML. What is a component? It is a code behind for your HTML. OK, so your component mm -hmm. is code behind for the HTML. And what you can instantiate within your component, you can instantiate some model with your component to create an MVC architecture. It is a mandatory to have an MVC architecture. No, you can have simple HTML and you can have your code behind within within that you can have everything as uh, as a as as a component member or uh, other properties as a component member and you can directly use within your HTML. However, for segregation purpose or however to make the code cleaner, we create a model and we push everything. I mean, we push the properties within the model so that our component shouldn't managing this property by himself. And that is that is the liberation or that is the advantage of using the MVC design pattern. OK, so it's not a mandatory to use MVC within Angular. But we can use the MVC. But what is our what is the main purpose of Angular is to bind your HTML with your code behind, and that code behind is nothing but your component. Your component has a uh, has a link to your HTML page. Okay. So now now what we have learned is that hey, if the component is something that is loaded on my or or you know we have a Bootstrap component. We have seen that we have a Bootstrap module, and from the Bootstrap module we have a Bootstrap component which is getting loaded when we load our index.html. Now, if that component is getting load, we, we have to replace that component and load other, I mean, we have to replace that component and load other data within it. Okay, if we wanted to implement the navigation. But, okay, so let's, let's, let's now look at how the routing works with the case of the Angular. So let me go to a day three. Let me start this. Okay, let me close this first. Just give me a minute, I'm closing my terminal. Yes. Okay. Take notes. See the product. Take three. CD. Customer application. So you know uh, what was our customer application previously, right? So I'm making few changes within the customer application. So I'm I'm defining my main module. I'm defining my main module which will be now in our case, what we discuss is that, hey, there will be something called, okay. So what is, okay, there, is, there will be something called as a main module. So that is our main module or there is something called as a startup module, which we define in main.ts. So there we can say that, hey, the customer model is nothing but our bootstrap model, which will be when wherever someone loads the index.html, there is along with index.html, there is a main.ts TS is being, uh, being fired or being loaded. And from the main.ts, we are loading our bootstrap module, that is customer model or whatever the model you specify as a bootstrap model. So I called it as a main module and I put it within the customer app. I, I created a main module, I put it within the customer app. So this is the module that is the main module. Within the module, we have a declaration. So what is our module? It has a, what is ng module? ng module is a uh, Decorator that we assign on uh, decorator that we assign. What this decorator provide? It's provide a declaration. It provides the import and it provides the bootstrap. What is the declaration? Declaration is nothing but whatever our odd model that we wrote, whatever our all uh, all component that we wrote comes within the declaration. So module is combining components together. Module is combining component together. So so we have our module as a customer module, which is our main module. Within that, we are combining uh, component together. So whatever our all component should come with it, uh, come here. So like our professional website, I created a few structures. So I created a few more component. I created the home component. I created a master page component. I created the supplier component. I created the, okay. I created the, uh, okay. Why I created it? Let's see. Means uh, let's do it. I'll show you on the paper first. So let it be. This is well. This is a website. Okay. Let it be. This is a website where we are going. Browser on type typing. Now it will be having some header, 
and it will be having some footer and within that uh, it will be having a placeholder to load all the uh, this it will be having some placeholder here this is nothing but a placeholder it is a blank page where it allows user to load the things right it is a blank page where it allows user to load the things and allow you not a user allow the website to load the con content now these content can be a dynamic in nature i mean when the user first time visit it this is like a home when the user first time visit it this placeholder has content called as a home okay but and and user has a link on the on the master page user has a link on the master page user has a link so all, what what we have on the master page let's write on the notepad okay so there is a master page which is loaded first it has a header it has a footer okay then uh, it it has a header it has a footer then it has a body in that body what what are all things are there it will be having links what that links does that links allows user to load the content and there is something default link there is something a default link that is being loaded when there is uh, a i mean when there is user select i mean user haven't selected any choice that which link he wanted to load that time a link load that called as a home link or a land up page okay so home I mean, let's call it home for the simplicity so it called as a home link okay then there are other links like about us whatever the content is so there are might be a multiple link so for first time it has a placeholder load the home and after that this space loader lo place lo space uh, sorry my bad this placeholder load a home page and after the after that based on the user action or based on the links user chosen so here are there are multiple links like home in our case it's about sort of that so let it be in this case there are two so when the user comes into the page by default of in the placeholder we are loading the home page and when the user clicks on the about in the placeholder we are loading the about us page okay that's that's how the entire project is structured now similar way our angular project is also structured there similar way so we are having a customer we are having a master page here okay so in this master page we are we are having a placeholder which allows us to load either home page or if the user clicks on the customer it goes to the customer if user clicks on the supplier it goes to the supplier so these are the two component i add, uh, these are the two uh, these are the two new component i have added okay so i have added the home page component master page component and a supplier component now what is contained within the supplier component it's nothing it's a simple component where i'm saying welcome to the supplier page and that's it that's what i did within it so far with me okay everybody so far with yes. me yes okay yes right so let's let's view this component very quickly so there is a home page component here also it's a simple component welcome to the home page okay then there is a supplier component which is also a simple component a customer component is our older component there is no change into it customer component as older component which i am having so we are having a three component now and then there is a master page where we are doing the routing okay where we are doing the routing now how to set up a routing routing is a three step process routing is a three step process in which what we do we first register a route routing is a three step process so what we do first step is register okay second step what we do define define our route define our routes that map to define define our route that map to browse uh, that map to the actual path that map to the browser path or let it be that map to the browser path we define our route that map to the browser path and the third third what we do so first we register the route then we define that map to the browser path when we define the route that map to the browser path so first we register the route then we define the route that maps to the browser path and a third and the final step where we say is that the where this route to be loaded so route written as the actual html pages or actual data or actual component so it defines that where this data to be loaded or where this component to be loaded or where this component to be loaded yes it's always a component where is component to be loaded okay where this component to be loaded so we first register then we define and third we load so let's 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 make it very simple so this is a three step process where we register we define and we load okay 
first we register define and load so let's look let's look at this how we register first okay so registration is nothing but it's a very simple process registration is nothing but a very simple process where we create a collection collection of route so i have created a folder i have created a separate folder which has a collection of route okay so i have created a routing folder which i have in a ts file i have given what is our uh, what is our prefix customer app so everything that we create within our project customer app having a prefix as a customer app so i wrote my customer app prefix and then i say is the main routing and i given a name ts that's it that's what i did and if you open it it will be having main routes and where there are two things while how we register the routes so i created an array first so let it be i created an array first okay this is the only thing i did this is the array which we required to create after that i have started putting the element within it okay so what is the structure of element how to we register route we says that the path what is mean by the path if user if some if you observe after you are domain so when you host a website there is a domain what is that domain is nothing but www.google.com is a domain www.learningbed.com is a domain so these are nothing okay. so these are nothing but your domain and from after that whatever come it's your part okay it's your path to that domain i mean if you saying someone says that hey home or let it be capital in our case someone says that the home then it will go to this this path it will go to, we are saying that the hey the path is home and if someone says the customer the path is customer so what it says that hey if you notice a home path after your main domain you should be calling a component home component you should be calling a component home component if you notice a customer path you will be calling a component customer component if you notice a supplier path you will be calling a supplier component what is this last could you please can anyone explain me this uh, last is uh, because if if any uh, component is not found then it will go to that page if component is not found it will go to that page what is been my component not found uh default unload page non load component okay what My is default what exactly this is a default load page but what is default load page what we just learned now Home what is page. a path path is a yeah, main domain www exactly uh -huh. so if uh, no what is a path is that what we seen that whatever comes after the main domain is what we called a path right Yes, mm -hmm. if the path is blank, then it will be redirect to the home. home exactly, exactly. So that's what. So that's what I'm saying to you. So please listen carefully. Whatever I'm saying, please try to understand it. So you you have a main domain, and after that, whatever come, it's called a path. Okay. So you have a path home. That time it goes here. If you have a path customer, it goes here, and there is a no path, or there is a main domain like this or like this. Okay. So it will directly falls here, and it will try to load the home page. Will directly fall here and try to try to load the uh, try to load the home page. So this is our routing. So we are done with our first step. So we have done with the first step that is called as a register. Everyone understand what is register means? Yes, yes. And why? What are these import? So when we are saying that the hey, and when we are registering it, we are creating an array. We are saying that the path, and after the path, the component which we wanted to load. So the uh, syntax is path and the component. and the path is nothing but whatever you the path you wanted to define so let it be you wanted to say that someone comes to the main domain and says that says that hey load load the page that time load the page that time i wanted to load the, the that time i wanted to load the home page then you will be writing like this okay so um, am i i have a question yeah please go ahead so is it necessary to define the const keyword in this main uh, route that yes, export const, const main yes it is constant we are not going to change it okay if i uh, remove that it will give me error if we Most remove that it should let's try uh view terminal and let's say then then don't think it should give any kind of error let's see
Sometimes I get confused with the questions because you know something and you wanted to confirm, and that's why you are asking. That's what I guess sometimes based on your question. But it's fine. Let's check it. I I don't know if it gives an error or not, but it's it's ideal to define a const. The most of the project has a structure where it defines as a constant because we don't go and change our route for a project. It is remain a constant, and whenever we do a deployment, that time which I mean before a deployment we change our route. But when we are deploying some uh, after a deployment, there is a fixed route. That is application points. That's why it is a constant. Okay. As per the logic, it should not give any error actually. Okay. That doesn't give that. That's true. But as a good coding practice is, uh, you should be doing this. I mean, when someone auditing your project, he'll be checking for these things only, and he'll be asking you why this is let and why not const. And if you are defining something constant and read only, it asks you why this is read only, and why it is not. What is the difference between read only and the constant? Sort of these things uh, is usually done when there is someone auditing it or someone does a code review. That time we try to find the same thing so that the code is readable and maintainable. Right. So let's let's move ahead. Let's move. Ahead. So this is the main route, which is a which is a constant, which has a path and a component. Any other question here? So far, everyone clear with the registration process? Yes. Okay. So this is how we register. Now, second is second part is is to define, right? So how we define it? Now we have registered it. So we have a main module. So in the main module, what we do is we say the uh, add direct Angular slash route uh, router, add Angular slash router. So this is the from there we import called as a route router module. From this, we import a router module. And within the import, we say that a router module for uh, for root for root is uh, is your main route or let's not let's not go there. So for root, this is the syntax, and we register. This is the registration process. Now, everyone understand how we register? We use uh, we use a router module, and router module has a method for root which takes our route. So far with me. Yes. This is how we register it. Okay. Now there is last step which is remain. So everyone understand the registration process? Yes. Again, again, let's look into the syntax. So we have a uh, we have a router module. Router module has a method called as the for a uh, for root. For root is saying that hey, I'm I'm registering a root routes and which takes a collection. This method takes a collection of routes. Right? This method takes a collection of routes and it registers them. So far with me? Okay. And let's move on to the last step. Let's move on to the last step. After that, you will be champion in the routing. You can able to define the route. So we done the register. Everyone know how to register it. It's creating the collection. Then there is a define process. So you come to your mod main module or you come to your module, right? You come to your module and there you register the route, like you have registered the other things, uh, like you have registered your uh, form module, browser module, right? Form module, browser module is the is the important one which is which is used to load your component within the browser, for which the this browser module is important. Like uh, like that, you will be imported the uh, Angular router and from which you imported the router module. Okay. And which has the and that's that's completed your registration step. Then the third and the last step, which is the loading. Third and the last step, which is the loading, which is very simple. The loading is the most simple. So where we load this? So we seen in our diagram, we have a master page which has a header and which is having a footer and which has a link and a placeholder to load the routes, right? So let's go into our master page. Okay, so let's go into the master page. Where, how do we find out the master page? It is the Bootstrap page, or it is a Bootstrap component. So from our Bootstrap, or from you know, from our uh, main.ts, we are calling the module customer module. From customer module, we will be calling a Bootstrap as a or the first module as a our master page component. Okay, master page component. So when we go to the master page component, it links to the Master page view dot html. Master page view dot html. So if I go to the master page dot view, here I'm uh, here I'm here I'm having my header here. Here I'm having my header here. 
So you can put a learning mat image or whatever you like here. This is the header, which will be having the uh, very elegant image. This is my footer, which is having the footer things. Okay. And this is my body where, where I'm saying that within this body where I'm saying that, Hey, I wanted to define more links. So, okay. So let's, let's first remove that. So it's simple. The anchor tag, we say that, Hey, within the anchor tag. So what is the anchor tag does? It provides us or it, it's a, it's a link. So when you click on the customer, it takes you to the customer. Okay. So that there, there we have some reserved keyword known as the router link. We have a reserved keyword known as the router link. So this router link is mapped with the path that you, that you see or that you register. So when, if you're having a path home, you define your path like this. So this is my path. Okay. Then there is a path customer. You define your path like this. And then there is a supplier. You define the uh, router link like, like this. Now this, this is what this map with your browser. Uh, I mean, this, this map with your browser URL. So someone goes and slays that slash home. This, uh, or this is map with your browser URL. So someone clicks on the home on the browser. It shows you, uh, it shows you your domain slash home. It shows you your domain slash home. If you click on the customer on the browser, it shows you your domain slash customer. If you click on the supplier on the browser, it will show you your supplier slash uh, your domain slash supplier. Okay. Till that point, it is clear. Now we also have in, in our module, we have also defined that, Hey, we, we define our routing in the module. We have also defined our routing, right? So we are saying the route model where we are defined our main path. Now it also knows that these paths also knows that when there is a path, I supposed to load the home comfort. Now the only question remain where I load this. Okay. So far with me. Can I repeat yes. again? Let's, uh, let's repeat it or so far with me, right? So we, what we do, we define it. Secondly, we define it. Sorry. We register it. Then we define it here in the HTML. We define it like this so that on the browser, you can get the path. And when these paths are being observed, uh, the angular angular server already knows that, Hey, if you observe these paths on the, uh, on the browser, you supposed to load, uh, I mean, for these paths, you supposed to load these components for these paths, you supposed to load these components. Now the only question is where to load. This has been answered by this router outlet. The where part is answered by the router outlet. So these all process is called as a loading. So you, you, you allow a user to go to that part and then you tell him that your content will be loaded within the router outlet. So this where is answered by this router outlet. So this three step process is clear. Yes. So register define and load. Yes. Right. So we first in the register, we create an array. Registration is very simple process. And what is now I would like to understand from you when we register it, what is the, uh, we create an array and what is the structure of that? Each element, what we define there? Um, a path and the, then uh, that component name. Path, right, and component. Yes. Then when we define, okay, then we define what is what we do here. Then we define what we do here. This is nothing but okay. In the register, we create an array, right? We create an array here. Uh, when we uh, when we define. We create a link. Yes. Sorry. When we define, we register what where we, we define. We define it inside the module. Yes. How we define within the module? We call that array. In the um, yeah. link. How we call that array? Through router outlet. No, no, sorry. Through router module, we have to pass the uh, array. Exactly. Exactly. And what is the method name? If you for remember. For root. Right, right. So exactly. And what is the load does? It it what it, what in the load does? We define the link and loader. Yes. Okay. So what is the link and the loader? What is link we call? What is the syntax? What is the reserved keyword here? Uh, uh, in, in link a router link. Exactly. And loader is router outlet. And loader is router outlet. So you master now. 
how to do the navigation right so if if you given a project and you ask to create uh, create a navigation you are able to do it right yes okay. yes sir. is it feasible that someone has can someone can you do a quick exercise you you have already home right you have already customers uh, so you already have a customer so just create a home and navigate between customer and home is it feasible for you to do that structure doesn't matter i mean just do whatever the three step process and do the routing we'll take a 5 minute or 10 minute break for you to do that is it fine for you to complete this exercise yes yes it's not mandated for everyone but uh, i mean it's mandated for everyone everyone at least try to do it So I'll pause myself for five minutes, and let's see till what part you are completed. i missed very important okay i missed very important point for that i wanted to do this exercise and once you do it you will end up in a error and once you end up in a error let me know and we'll take it to solve that error so if one of you completed and end up in getting that error let me know Sushil, are you doing this exercise, right? Yes, sir. Doing. Great. Is it feasible for you to share your screen? Yes, I have just started. I think, Ame, we are uh, need to uh, add the routes. I mean, constant in constant. We missed routes. Sorry. We missed uh, to include routes uh, when we are registering. So this time we need to. Uh, no, we register, right? Okay. Yeah, so register. what are the three step process? You tell me. So what is the first step? First is registering, right? Right. So in the register, so, what we do is create array. Then yeah, there is a array. define. Then there is yeah. define. What we do in define? Yeah, uh, you defined uh, the path and component, but uh, I think we missed uh, to uh, add the routes to the constant. Uh, array we include uh -huh. array, na? Okay. So, what is what is for root method text? Sorry. What is the for root method text? So we says that there is a there is something called as a router module, right? Which has a method for root. Yeah. Right. What? It's a method, right? So, what is the first parameter taken by that method? All the routes that you register. Yes. Okay. So it takes that. So we already pass the route to the our router module. And where this router module comes from? Angular router. Okay. So we register that. But once you do this every all step, there is there is a bound, you bound to get an error. And once you get it, let me know.
Okay, so you define the path, just write a component there, comma component. No, I just want to create the yeah, components first. I haven't created okay. So you are using NGGC, right? Okay. I'm getting the same error when you try to uh, create a component actually. So and G model is you are creating it within your project. This is very simple error. Model. Okay, this is because you don't have a global model. You, your model is present within your customer, right? Yes. So that's why it's not getting. If you just put it outside, you you can able to run it. So it it needs a model on the root level. Okay, so should I create manually around now? No, no, huh, you can create a manually. But you simply copy a customer and you know modify that. Okay. So what is saying that it's need a module. So there is a minus minus module also where you can say the equal equal to and then the path of the module. But it's better you can just instead of that you can just copy uh, create it manually. You know how to write the syntax. Right. It's better to do that. It it uh, when, whenever you ask it uh, ask the uh, Angular CLI to create a mod create a component. It always try to register it within the module, okay. And it tries to find the module within the root folder. And if it doesn't find, it's, it's not able to find it. It's complained that uh, it complained that the ng model is not found. If any other person able to do the navigation before uh, Sushil, let me know. Uh, Sushil, out of uh, just just to tell you that we we follow the naming convention with saying the, where our customer app is uh, our prefix. So your your component can be a customer app dot home okay. component sort sort of that customer app is a app name and dot home dot component dot right home component home home dot component it's better home component okay this should be home component right right okay home dot component instead of that it is better to pronounce home component. And your HTML will be similar, like uh, component app dot home, uh, home view, or home component dot view, whatever you like. Yes.
now this is your about right do we require that selector are we going to load the through the selector or are we going to load through the route so we should select it's it's optional if you want you can but it's if you omit it it's fine let's omit it so you can know that without selector it works okay Yeah, just simply paste that customer class and give it. Or if you want, you can write export and print that. Okay, there are a few extensions which I forgot to show you. No, no, no. It's a name that you will be importing, right? So it's a simple name. So let it be. This is about us, right? About so components. About components. You can say about components. Last name is start with a capital. Right. And you will be saying export before that, so that it will be public. Okay. Cool. That's it. That's it. Go to the HTML and just say uh, hi, welcome to about. That's one. Welcome. Hi from about component. Whatever you like. Same logic. I mean, same logic you can put within the. Uh, or let it be. That's it. Uh, don't do, do the home. Declare it as a master. Uh, home component we will do as a master as a startup. Should I rename it? Ah, uh, yeah. Master of home is okay. Master. And we'll use about as a library. Anyone able to finish it? Let me know, please. Okay. Hmm. Now, master, you need to define your links. Uh, Anchor tag. Okay, this is okay. Router link, right? Right. No, 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 no. Anchor tag. Within the anchor tag, do that. Don't do on the H1 tag. Instead of hash ref, you'll be saying here about, uh, sorry, here customer 
ein, aber ein, aber. This is about this is master component, right? Right. From master, you are providing a link, right? So what okay, is link the link? Yes. So that's why I am showing you on the UI. So there is a layout which has a placeholder and okay. Right, right. So if you if you go with that diagram, if you stick that diagram in your mind now, you can able to see the same in the project. Right. Okay. Equal to array index. Right. And within that single code, whatever name you want on your browser, right? So path you want on the browser. About from about simple about. There is no component, right? Do you want to be a, a, about component, right? It's it's on the browser. Copy paste it. Right. And here you choose. What you, what you want? Secondly, customer. Home or customer? No, yeah. customer component we already have. Mm. And say customer. Yes. And the third is the default. So okay, third is the default that will load. Okay, that will be that taken care by the Angular framework. Now you need to provide a placeholder where you want it to load. Or uh, it should be master component. Right within the master component. So provide the placeholder below this. So, uh, add a div. Here only, no? Huh. Add a div. Add? No, simple div. Just add a div, HTML div, div tag. And within that, say router, uh, router outlet. Router outlet is a Tag. Router hyphen outlet. Right. So, okay. So this is router outlet is nothing but a tag. So why we use the router hyphen outlet? Anyone aware about it? Here the our component will be loaded. No, I mean that's true. But why router hyper outlet? And why not a router outlet outlet? Okay, so uh, it is a selector, so right. And why we use a hyphen in the selector? Every time we do a selector, we use a hyphen within the selector. So selector is nothing but your HTML custom line. selector. HTML specification requires that if we define a custom selector, we need to add a hyphen in the middle. Exactly. So now why the HTML come with the, okay, so because of its custom selector, so that's why the HTML, I mean, so HTML has a tag, right? And HTML will be adding the tag in the future. So there are might chances that the HTML come and add a some tag called as a router outlet, but they will not, they will never include the hyphen within it. That's what they promised to the Angular. And that's why Angular says that whenever I'm creating my selector, I'll be adding a hyphen within it. So there is no, no name collision happening. That's it. Here you're about. Exactly. Everyone doing this, right? Or they are just watching the screen? What is complaining? This component. No, no, C is small. And you do C is small. It's small, okay. You don't need to import anything, it's just a key value plus. Component is a name that you given to your import. Yes, it's uh, now when you are writing it, you are getting it more clearly, right? Right. Customer component. So there is something called as auto import. So if you just write a customer component and if you have a plugin called auto import, it automatically imports the customer. Customer component. 
Right. Customer app component in your system. Yeah, I have it like that. Okay. It works much. No problem. And here you need to define the route. Customer. Default uh, this should be now same only. Right. About us. No, let's let's take about as a default. Okay. I mean, you like if you like a customer, I'm fine with it. And yeah, that's right. No one goes there. Now, now, register. Now you done with. Now you what? You, what you done it? You done with the first step, right? Register. Let's, register. let's do the second step. Let's register it. Sorry, our first step is register. Second step. Uh, second step is to define. Now define it. Component of module. Here. Right. First, we need to import router module first. Right. Router module. Wrong word. Right. Not from child. Right. And uh, uh, our collection that we just created. You exported it, right? Yeah, I have exported that. It's imported from. Right. Because by default, it's private. When you export, it's become public. Yes. Okay, so you that's it. You're done with it. Now the the last step is loading. So uh, you already done, uh, did it. Could you please go on to your home page and I mean, could you please go on to your about or uh, sorry, it's a home page, right? Or master page where you can see that. Show to yes. everyone. Master page, yeah. yeah. Show to everyone just to for a clarity because that's our last step, right? HTML, no? Right, right. HTML. So it's you're done it, right? Just mm -hmm. just now run your publication and see if it's working. Okay. I'll be mute for a minute for a minute. Yeah, sure. Okay. It is already there. Something is wrong. Uh, Susil, I think you need to rebuild. Did you able to run it? I have tried to rerun again. Run. Why? It was not worked. Okay. Oh, you you change the port, right? No, no, you have same port. Someone other person changed it. This is the same port, right? Mm -hmm. so it should be working, but what is complaining about? It's nothing. No error. You could you please inspect? Okay. Go on the browser, inspect. Console. Nothing and error. Refresh it. Remove about. Okay, because you don't have a path. You go to your path. Have you defined it in capital or it's a small? Okay. That is my router. Here it is. Some small only. Part is in small. About and the customer is also seen small. Very good. So that's also taken care of. Okay. Now just right click and format it. So it will be a more uh, clear. Yeah, it sure is. We are loading this component, but it is not okay, about component. Yeah, it is correctly loading our component. Of, yes. Where should I go? About dot component. Is it about dot component or about component? It's about dot component. 
yeah this is my path customer app dot about dot component dot yes yeah it's correct okay. go okay go back on your browser yes it's not completely okay remove that about and press enter okay it's going to customer by default right so is your default browser the browser yes. where you mentioned customer right right they were this is customer right huh? customer app component so go to your acha okay remove that and point it to your master uh, or boost up you have specify the customer right that's why so that's why. point it to your ma master, master component the component now it should work yeah, it should work finger cross yes Yeah, it's complaining. Customer master dot common dot HTML file path you are not given correctly. Okay, it's the path issue. Template you are at. So, are you able to run it? This. <coughs> it's low working. It it just a path. You can go to your customer and just check what is in the component you have not specified your uh, template URL correctly. Okay. Customer master dot component dot yes. Or home means wherever you're complaining, right? Wherever that read path is, it, it's not being specified correctly. Right. So there is there is something called as a, if you if you go to the extension, there is something called as the auto import. If you install that, it it usually uh imports it correctly there is there is no okay uh it's it's who's sharing so could you please run your code yes it is running it is like okay so you are you are done okay show everyone from start to end Uh, could you please uh, quickly go on to your customer app? Our three-step process, right? Show everyone that three-step process. Remove customer app, uh, whatever everything. We comment the customer app, whatever it has. So are you able to relate to your project, right? Everything we are teaching is based on the your uh, based on the core structure of your project, right? So everyone, uh, just to give you a, a glimpse, the Soma is already Soma is already working on a Angular project, and uh, Soma, what's your project name? Oh, uh, See, actually, I'm not uh, getting you uh, properly. Actually, my uh, net is. Uh, uh, No worries, no worries. You can stop sharing. Hello, am I Jay? Right, right. You can stop sharing. No worries. Right, you able to solve your uh, issue? Should should we move ahead? Of course, we can. Uh, so, Shil, you able to solve your issue? No, it's uh, showing error on router outlet HTML file. Not yet. You define your you define your component within your uh, uh, module, right? Okay, yeah, that's the issue. Okay, you haven't haven't declared it. No, no. Yes. Okay, you need to declare your all component within your uh, module. Yeah, yeah, I need to re register in in module. This is no worries. It's good that we are falling into this era. So everyone are learning. I mean, everyone is also learning along with you. Right. Thank you. 
Okay. When you are declaring, do you also have an import imported them? Uh, yes, I think this error is different. Okay, I got it. Okay, there is no CSS, but still there is a sign in this declare. Okay, it's your CSS errors, right? No, it is not CSS error. This is ng component did not match any elements at okay. Okay, just go your you your main main okay. Go to your root model, it should be having a selector. So do you have a selector? Now you change, right? So go oh. go to your main.ts. Go to your <laughs> main.ts. Ah, right. This should have a selector. Your master page should have a selector. Okay. So what is the what is our default selector, which we defined in the index? Approved. Right. So here also we should have selector. Only one selector is needed. So basically, what when the index load index load, it 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 tries to find a selector that should be present in the bootstrap component. And our bootstrap component only need a selector. Rest of the component doesn't need a selector because they will be managed by the route. But our bootstrap component, which is a master component, being loaded using a selector. Selector name is app master. You are using app master. I have, have named it. So right. you need to name the name it same. Okay. I have, so I have. Okay. Then go into your uh, index.html. Okay. Change it here, change it to app master. That's why it's good that you rename it so right. that you know where it is being run. Yeah, why it is growing here. Everyone are with social, right? Everyone able to understand what he is doing. Yeah, now we are able to run. Right. Now okay, click on the about and home and see if the navigation works, right? It works, oh. right? You're happy that it's working, right? Yes. Let's let's let, let's move on to the next one. Now let me allow to share. Yeah. Because we are running out of time. Yes. Okay. So now we are learning some theoretical part here. So people will come and I'll tell you that hey, my application is not performant enough. So what is the first step that in your mind when someone told, tells you that hey, my front end application is not performant enough? So what is the first step in your mind? Or let it be someone comes and show you the learning mate website and sees that it's not a performant enough. What that means? What is the first thing in your mind? And it tells you it's a JavaScript website. It uses a JavaScript framework. Any website. Whether it's React, whether it's Angular, whether it's Vue, this concept is applied in three of the uh, JavaScript frameworks. So basically, all the components are like getting loaded in the one section. What is that mean? Suppose we have like uh, four components, um, like home, about, and let it be. We have components name uh, naming number wise one, two, three, four, and hundred components. Okay. So hundred component is getting loaded when we hit the learning web dot com. Okay, Perfect. what that exactly means? Why the website performance matter? Because uh, all the uh, all the JS related to uh, all the uh, JS related to the that component and all the business logics are getting loaded in once in the browser actually. Exactly. So our in our case our vendor dot JS will be heavy. In our case our vendor dot JS will be heavy. So I can show you how it can be heavy. Just bear with me for a minute. I can show you the actual example where there is a struggle going on to reduce the vendor dot JS. In learning metonymy, so there is a project where they are working 
to reduce the size of vendor dot chairs. So bear with me for a minute. Some of you might be working on that project, so I don't want to go and shout there that hey, application is not performant. I learned it in uh, session today. <laughs> don't do that. Anyway, so let me share our screen uh, and quickly and show you. So this is the application. This is the project. Let's look the vendor.js file, or it might be reduced, and I'll because they are trying to morning when I connect, they are trying to reduce it. Let's load it. It's an Angular application. Okay, so vendor.js is main.js. Very good. Okay, so they reduce the size of this file. Okay, so this were this were an application where the vendor dot js size is two MB, and they already reduced it. So that was a yesterday's case, but they are working. They worked on it and they reduced the size. Anyway, so basically, what is our code? Whatever you entirely code write, we learn that it goes into the vendor dot js, right? So it increased your vendor dot js size gradually started increasing. And a time comes where when your vendor.js size becomes a uh, problem to the application. Right means when you load the application, the entire vendor.js code being downloaded, and its size gradually increases, and it becomes a performance issue. I mean, if you wanted to load a 2 MB from the browser, you you have a lot of internet speed. However, consider that uh, your internet bandwidth is slow or due to any reason, your vendor.js speed is. Uh, I mean, you you you. It's it's taken a time to load the application due to your file size, and it's taken a time to load that file and then to render onto the browser. So it's like it's first loaded onto your uh, browser. Once the loading is completed, your browser browser start executing the your HTML code. Okay, and so you you wait till your two MB is getting loaded or your five MB is getting loaded. So that's what that's that's create the problem. So what what how to solve this problem? So like we we already seen the our ideal structure right we already seen the our ideal structure so we we come to on the page where we'll be having a header footer and and a master page uh, with a link and a placeholder where we load the where we load our uh, components so we have a home component which we load first time or there is a land up uh, or there is a land up component or a home component which we load when there is nothing being typed in the browser right or there is nothing in the browser that time we load our home page okay so these home page is required every time when we visit uh, when we try to log in within our page or when we visit our page okay this home component is required but other component doesn't require when we try to visit our page right because we go to them so this is the home component that we require when we visit the learning mat but but the other component shouldn't be we don't require it right we we require it when we uh I mean, if I go to the vendor style dot, no, this is style dot js. I go to the vendor dot js. So we we when we load this or when we load our page, we require a home page, right? But we don't require. Okay, it's okay. Anyway, so when we come to the learning mat page, we require a home page to be loaded. But these other pages uh, we don't require. But when user clicked here. That time we require when user click here. That time we require it, and we can go and fetch there. So, what is this called? Lazy loading. So, what is lazy loading? What is the lazy loading uh, anonymous name? Oh, sorry. What is the lazy loading? Loading similar name. It is. Uh, it is loading. 
loading on demand loading on demand it is called as on demand loading it is called as or it is a synonym it is called as a on demand loading so you load where you require so whenever we click here that time we are loading it and if a user comes here and never clicks on it it will not getting uh, getting loaded uh, into your browser so that a way you can reduce your bundle size and you can avoid to load unnecessary files within your bundle so you only load that are files are necessary to render your home page and rest of the file you will load on demand or you load whenever you require right you load whenever you require so these call these concept is called as a lazy loading and using lazy loading you can solve the problem of performance using a lazy loading you can solve the problem of performance so with our cases we have a our cases will be having a home page and we have other pages like customer about us and what not and what not in my case i am having a supplier customer page sort of that so we don't require a customer we don't require a supplier we just require a master page and a default page that is been loaded in the placeholder and that is called nothing but a home page that is what we require so we create our first bundle which has this thing and the rest of the bundle we create eventually the rest of the bundle we create eventually okay so we we'll create our first bundle that will be having this thing and the other bundle will create eventually or whenever the user demands for it whenever the user demands for it now everyone understand the concept of lazy loading yes yes okay so how it fit within the routing so someone when clicks on the link that time only we loads it read other uh, other in other cases we don't load it okay so now we learn our three step process our three step process where we having a register where we create a array where we have a define where we actually go and define within our imports and we you we, uh, we actually define the uh, route module and within the route module we use the method uh, for route okay and for uh, for route and for route we pass our uh, our array and that how we define it then in the load we have a router link and we have a router outlet which does the job so this is a three step process now this three step process remain as it is there is no change in the three step process you do not need to forget it or you do not need to undo it but there is some new concept that we need to learn that is a modularity of the application there is a new concept that we need to run it is a modularity of application so we we in our first pro project or whatever we developed so far we will have a one module only right that is our main module so our main module where we declare our all components now there is something called as a modularity where you have a multiple modules and you see is that hey this module is not this module is nothing but my bootstrap module which i wanted to use but there are other modules like when you are saying whom we serve so we have a module name whom we serve okay we have a main module which loading the home page and master page we have a, another module that is loading that is that is loading whom we serves and all the links within the whom we serve then we are having a solutions module that loads uh, that load all the links within the solution or, or these links physically represent a components so all component then we have a about about us module which loads everything within the about us so you understand the modularity right yes right so in our case we'll be having a customer okay so the customer might have the function like add a delete and view customers so these everything comes under the customer model we have a supplier so supplier related things add supplier remove supplier or view supplier it comes under the customer model oh, sorry it's come under the supplier model so these are the modules so we going to create a multiple module out of which one is the one is the one module is our bootstrap module okay and the rest the module will be loaded on demand means someone comes here and clicks a link what we are doing we will be loading a module first we will be loading a module first and then we are loading the component within the module so what is lazy loading in case of the angular it is loading module first and then the component within that module or which uh, it load all the components that is declared in that module okay and it also loads the bootstrap component on the browser so if someone asks you what is lazy loading so you can tell him that hey lazy loading is responsible to load the module 
and then the component within that module. So far with me? Yes. Yes. So what is the lazy, lazy loading in case of the Angular? It loads a module and then the component within that module. Now, when I'm saying that, hey, you, you when the user clicks here, when the user comes and the clicks here, he actually goes to the server and demand that page or actually goes to the server and demand for that module. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what you observe? So when we do the page, what is what is being returned? Uh, that component, the child component. A promise is being written, right? A promise, yeah. yeah. And how when this promise is being written, how we how we deal with the promise using then, right? So similar concept yeah. apply with the angular lazy loading, right? Similar concept apply with the angular lazy loading. Now let's let's see this in action. Let's see with the actual code. Okay. Let's see this with actual code. So if I close this, if I go here, just bear with me for a minute. So three lecture we done. We are here on the fourth. We need to go till the eighth. That's cool. Okay. So the customer app, right? So this is this is nothing but our cust our main module. Okay. So in the previous day, if you if you notice in the main module, we register all the components, but we are not going to register all components now. Or we register no, sorry, wrong word. We declare all the components, but now we are not going to declare all the components. We'll be declaring only home component and master page component. So what is our master page component is the layout which provides the layout for header, footer and the body where the body contains the link and our outer outlet to pro to load our home page, right? To load our home page with a, uh, yes, to load our home page and the home page is getting load because it is specified as the default route and how we specify the default route. If we go to the main router, we specify our default route like this. We specify our default route like this. Now, this is also, so we run the syntax that it comes the path and the component. It comes the path and the component. But now there is another, uh, there is another keyword called as a load children. There is another keyword called as a load children where we are using a dynamic import, where we are, we are defining a load children as a function, where we are defining a load children as a function and we use the import syntax here. So you see we are using the import syntax uh, on top, but what if we use the import syntax within the function? So it means that whenever this function being called, this import is being called. Whenever this function is being called, this import is being called. So whenever, now what is this path ensures? You tell me what is this path ensures? Hello, everyone. You're awake? Yes. You please tell me what is this path in chat? Path so when, uh, whenever the user click on the customer link. So right, 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 right. But what is in the browser that represents in browser address? What is this path ensures? Uh, uh, yeah, main domain slash uh, customer. Right. So whenever you see this customer, what it does is try to load the component is right. Now in this hmm. case, whenever there is a customer, it will be calling it will be invoking this load children function. Instead of calling a component, it will be invoking this load children function, which has mm -hmm. an import, which has an import. So whenever this input is specifying within a function, right? Or this import being called, when the function execution is done, we call this dynamic import. We call this dynamic import. It doesn't call the lazy loading. We call this dynamic import, okay? This dynamic import is a concept of TypeScript. In the TypeScript also, you can do the dynamic import. It in the React also you can see this dynamic import many places. Okay, it is the concept of TypeScript. You can do this dynamic import. So whenever this function being invoked, it is actually going and importing the customer module. Okay, so what what we learn when we do the lazy loading? What we load first? Hello everyone. What we learn here when we are doing the lazy loading? What we do? In case of the learning mode, what we are lo loading there, module first, right? Yes. Yes. So here we go to the customer module and we load customer module. And after that, what we do, then what we do, load a component within that module. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is a bootstrap component for that module. So we okay. first load the module and load a component within that module. So let's yes. go to this customer module. So what I did within each folder, I added a different module, which I wanted to lazy load. 
for them i added a module and in which i do the declaration in which i do the declaration and where i say that the all module which is contained within this uh, which i wanted to load with this module now this can contain the n number of module in my case it just a customer module but it can be customer module customer add module customer view module customer delete module sort of this can contain all the modules that is exist within the uh, customer uh, customer domain and then then okay and then we we use okay so basically i also define a i'll, I'll come to this as of now you neglected as of now you neglected so this is a customer model and this is a bootstrap uh, bootstrap model is also a customer model but we will be doing the lazy loading okay so for me it's required because i have specified uh, customer ad okay now there are chances that within the customer you might be have a multiple model so uh, multiple components right you will be within a customer model you will be having a multi multiple component like customer 1 customer 2 or customer ad and whatever so you define your customer component and you also wanted to navigate to i mean let it be you you are on to here let it be you are here you are on the learning mat consider that here i am going on the uh, okay so consider i am clicking here okay it doesn't matter. so consider i am clicking on the edtech companies right and so it loads me the edtech companies but it also here it also provides the links to road uh, gives me a k12 or higher education or workplace these are the links where which is specified within the edtech company so if you consider that assume that here there is some something called as uh, there are three links which allows me to navigate so these are called as the these are called as the these are called as the navigation i mean these these you are having a component where you where you where you navigate to a component which has a link from where you navigate to other component or it's it's like a navigation within navigation okay or it's like a route within the route so for that i use the for from from, uh, from child okay for child i have used the for child and here i have declared i have also done the three step process for it and here i declare a path and i save component to be load so for in my cases it's just a one component which i'm being referring here and so someone where goes to the customer slash ad it's actually hitting this route customer slash ad which actually hitting this route so this will be the child route of the main route so what it does first let's let's focus here let's not deviate from so there is a load children which does the dynamic import and you import a module and then you once you import a module then it use a then syntax and it use a component it load the component within the module so i am loading the customer okay so whenever someone use the slash customer it will load this customer module okay this customer module and customer module has a bootstrap which load this customer component however you can have a multiple module it for which also you can define a route here and which is known as a child route like it within a customer you can have a three four other routes where you can say within the customer i wanted to go to add customer i wanted to go to the view customer sort of that and based on these being triggered so if there is nothing being specifies uh it, it directly load the customer but if i specify the ad it will go to the and load the i mean if i specify the ad it also load the cust uh okay so if i go to the uh my domain slash customer it will go to the customer module if i say domain slash add it also go to the customer module but if we, if i want if i am if i willing to having other model i can include that here okay so far with me yes are you sure any problem here any question let's pause here any question about load children so are you are you are you are you comfortable with define process here so in the main route what we do we use a load children instead of component load children is a function which has a import and then syntax so this import is dynamically going and loading this file it's fetching this file dynamically and it returns a promise which we are resolving like this and then we are taking it the our module from it then we are taking it our customer module from it and returning that module same with the case of the supplier everyone uh, everyone get this syntax yes yes okay now we done with our uh, our define phase we done with our uh, yes we done with our uh, define phase 
sorry we done with our registration phase now the second phase is goes to define it define phase is remain as it is we done with our registration phase let's go to the main app module so right and right so here everything is same everything is same no changes required okay here everything is same no changes required we define it right and we we are actually loading the module and from the module there is a bootstrap bootstrap component that is being loaded and and also we can have a different uh, i mean also we can have a child path which can be load using the using the for child method okay for child method we can use uh, uh, we can we can also define the child path if we are having right so far with me the same is the case with a supplier supplier also has the same case supplier also has the same case so if i go to the supplier model supplier component and also the supplier routes where if i save the add supplier it takes me here so it is nothing but the same pages which i am loading twice uh, just for you to tell show you that this is how this is also possible like you can do this and like uh, last phase loading phase is also remain as it is okay there is something different so we also define the supplier as our child round so we will be having a two placeholder now so one is the parent placeholder where we loading our uh, where will be loading our uh, you know dynamic modules or where we will loading our normal mod okay let's let me show you so you will be more clear so this is the master page where we do the load step where we'll be having a links and where we'll be having the router uh, router outlet right where we'll be having the router outlet right but but there will be other router outlet for our child route so if you go to the customer and if you go to the customer component html there Okay, I haven't declared it because I don't have any other page. But all here also you can have a router outlet if you wanted to load your child content within this page. But what I did is I always stick to the I I stick to the main router uh, main router outlet and I loaded everything within it because I use the complete path here. So I can show you what is the complete path. So instead of using a customer, I said the customer dot add. Okay. So when uh, how it how it is being resolved? So when it looks at the customer. it goes to the it goes to the first main route and to find the add it goes to the child route so far with me okay so if i go let me show you what i mean so if i go to the routing there is main routing you can only see the customer there is no add right to find the add it needs to go to this child route that is customer route so where i define a add and that's how it is being resolved so far with me now you get it yes yes okay okay right and this is the default path as it is so now how this lazy loading work let's see in action Amar, does it mean that our vendor dot js file is dynamically changing its size? Exactly. So our vendor dot js is dynamically changing its size. So we basically previously we are loading everything within our vendor dot js. So let it be the vendor dot size our size is one MB. We drastically reduce it to the uh, let it be half the size because of we are creating a multiple bundles. So our vendor dot js will be of let it be a twenty KB and other. So let let me show you. Let me show you. we we'll yes. come to that part on the modules how much module size individual right. module size right let me show you so when it build right it shows us the all the files that it build it for us so when we do the ng serves it shows us the all the files that he created let's wait for a minute or two
so dynamic loading is, sorry so lazy loading is very simple it just use a import statement within a function so when we use a import statement within a function we call this dynamic uh, we call this as a dynamic import so have you seen the vendor.js yeah it's 2.3 mb and let's see our previous vendor.js it should be of the same size So this is the size. Let me copy this. Okay. Let me press. I don't have a little. Let press press. Let's take a snapshot, right? Snapshot. And let's let's try to view this actually. So we'll be sure that what we are doing is correct. Let's close this. This is a customer, this is a supplier. This is a friend. This is a customer, this is a supplier. Okay. So everything is loaded within it. Right. And you go to the this is a simple navigation that we'll have. Go to the network tab, we'll reload it. Now there is a vendor.js. And Whatever our customer, right? Am I really sharing it wrongly? It's a mean of choice, right? Uh, I'm sorry, it's it's a uh, apology from my side. I use the very wrong word. So there's a vendor.js which loads the file uh, that is required. Uh, in, that is that is defined in the startup, and this is the main.js which has every com every model that you wrote. So it actually has everything. Okay, the actual size will impact on main.js, I guess. Actual yeah. size will impact on main.js. So it's it's my apology. I use the wrong word. No, it's fine. So this is okay. So let's focus. the uh, The concept is very important, and we shouldn't be losing out on it. So okay. here, the customer component dot ts is a customer component dot ts, which files included within the main dot js, right? And there is this. Uh, what is the main dot js size? Let's look into it. So the main dot js size is twenty one point five kb, right? And let's stop it. Let's go cd dot dot cd dot dot and cd page four cd customer application and do npm start and let's see so here if you notice we can able to see the physically all the components here okay so it can go and it says that hey this is your customer component okay and it gives you a customer component and it also shows you where your customer component is registered okay so all the class everything is everything it shows okay now this shouldn't be the case with uh, with our new application because here we are lazy loading our lazily loaded our customer component so right so only uh, only registration or only the import for it should be there 
based on the thing shouldn't be there. So let me clear it and okay. So it's created. Let's see the size now. So uh, so now you, if you see these are the lazy loaded chart. So the customer and the supplier are the lazy loaded chart. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there is a uh, there is a vendor dot js, but there is a main dot js which size should be reduced. So previously we have the twenty kb and now it's a ten kb. Ten kb. So far with me. Yeah, dynamically it's changing uh, on main dot js. Right. And these files will not be seeing it. When we are loading our application, but these will be lazily going to, or on demand loading. So when we click okay. here, we go to the server, we ask for this file. This file is being bundled and sent to us. And uh, sorry, this file is already bundled there on the server and it's sent to us. So we can see in the network that this is being loaded. So if I refresh it, so it will be having your main.js. And if I go to the main.js and if I see the customer component, customer uh, component. I'll, I'm not getting it. Yes. Okay. There is zero reference. But previously, if we notice, we do have a lot of references of customer component. Right. Now, let's see where is our customer component. So let's see where is our customer component. So let's remove it and let's click here customer. and observe. So when I click here, it should give me this chunk. When I click here, it should give me this chunk. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So what we understand when we do a lazy loading, we actually load the module. And all the component within it, that module, within and it, then right. then the Bootstrap model will be loaded. In our case, it's directly going to the customer dot add, so it 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 should use the internal routing and load a customer component for us using the internal routing again. Okay. So it goes to the Bootstrap model again. It finds the routes there. It goes to that add routes and it again load the same component. So let me click here, and here is our customer component, and here is fine being downloaded. Okay. And if I go here and try to find it, I should be able to find my customer component. Okay. Yes. Yes. Pio. Right. So I'm able to find my customer component. Everyone, so far with me. Yes. Any question yes. here. Everyone, please speak out. Hello. Yes. Yes, nothing from mind. Right. OK, so that is the simple step in the lazy loading. I expect when you join tomorrow, you will be showing me the lazy loading example. And this is how the lazy loading being done. And here, what we are first doing is, it's very important. Please note this. We are first loading our module and then the component or bootstrap component within our module. We can also have the child path like this. Even if I go to the customer, it should satisfy me and it should load because I lazily loaded it. Okay, so it it's only uh, I mean there is no path there is there is no path currently listening to my customer or there is no route. So if I wanted to load it, I can be doing like this. If I wanted to load the customer route, I should be going to my customer routes. And I'll be saying that okay. And there is nothing. I also wanted to load the customer. And if I go here and just say customer, it should help me out today. Okay. And if I say add, it will also point me to the same thing. And if I go to the supplier, let's let's go to the supplier and try to see the same. If I go to the supplier. If we remove it, it should bring the supplier bundle. And I can able to see the supplier component there. Okay. So we even understand what is lazy loading. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm not getting a much response here. What's happening? Is it going too slow? Do it going too fast? Any feedback? Not okay. Yes, Partha, tell me. It's okay. Sorry, I didn't get your feedback. What is okay? Is it it's is it going okay. too is it is it okay? It's, it's going on right way. Right way, right? So you understand lazy loading. 
now it's 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 easy for you to implement lazy loading if the project asks you to implement lazy loading you can able to implement it yes i'll try that first i have uh, tried from my side after that uh, yeah we need to practice share your screen we, yes. we still we still have a uh, two minutes let's share your screen we can we can hold for a two three minutes share your screen partha share your screen partha it's not complicated it's very easy we can do it very quickly yes just go go on to the uh, first step go on to the first step so there we are you, we should be defining a function load children that's it there are lots of uh, error ma'am uh, lots of error on your machine mm -hmm. no worries no worries no worries so uh, i'll i'll hope that when tomorrow you will join you will be able to do this yes yes ma'am or social could you please could you please go quickly on to your uh, quickly share your screen let's try to do it within a two minutes within a two minutes not sure let's stop my screen okay let's 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 take a break let's take a break let's connect to uh, let's connect tomorrow and hope when you connect you all will be completing with the lazy load and yeah, when your project yes, asks yes. you to implement the routing you should be able to do it yeah sure yeah sure okay it's just a three step process and you should be able to do it the child route you understand child route right so i'll share mm -hmm. my screen again and show you what is the child route and it's being rarely used however i'll show you uh, every project has a parent route only but it's it's rarely being used and it's it's fine if it's rarely being used also it's fine it's similar to your parent route step is same however you will be saying that instead of uh, root you will be saying that the child so you when you register it right okay now now the fact which i missed right let's let let me cover that very quickly because it's already a time so if you notice here we have a main route right we have a ng module so here we have a browser module okay here we have a browser module but if you see our lazy loading module that is a customer module that is our customer module we don't have a browser okay instead of that we are using a common module because we cannot load a browser module again so when we are clicking there we, if we try to load the browser module again it will complain it will complain it will not allow to load you browser module can be load once only once when we are loading our main module and so that's why we are using a common module to tell that tell the browser that browser module is already loaded i am a common module or i am a lazy loaded module so far with me hello yes. Exactly. So, so that's that's all about the lazy loading. And uh, please note the syntax here. So, if I go to the routing, uh, please note the syntax here. So, this is the load children where we are having a function arrow function which does the does the import. And if you go to the HTML file here, okay. If you go to the uh, app module here. sorry here module okay if you go to the module here we are also doing registering our child module so we have a for root and here we use a for child to represent the children path and in our case the children paths are nothing but this default path is only there but you can have a multiple path and say that the customer add component our add component so this will be a separate component which you can navigate to once you loaded your module for this the module first uh, being you need to load the module and how you load the module using the import so on this note let's close this session let's meet tomorrow so tomorrow we'll try to do something interesting so first we'll check that everyone is on the same page and everyone able to do the lazy loading and uh, tomorrow we'll start using so let it be the api calls we can do that api calls using the observable and we can store our customer data within it and there is also important that to create our own components reusable component that also will learn okay okay thank you for joining this session and yeah let's meet tomorrow yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you